even as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways, saith the Lord. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. He is an awesome God. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy of worship. Let us worship Him in spirit. Let us worship Him in truth as we bow our heads in prayer. Great is thy faithfulness. O oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Summer and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, thy mercy and love. Our Father and our God, as we come at the beginning of this new year, we confess our need for your presence and for your guidance as we face the future. We're confident of your abiding presence and we are depending upon your unfailing grace. We each have our hopes and expectation for the coming year, but only you alone know what this year holds for us and only you can give us the strength and the wisdom we will need to meet the challenges of this new year. Help us to seek your will for our lives and trust in your unfailing promises. We plead for your mercy and we ask for your forgiveness. In the midst of life's disappointments and heartaches, help us to turn to you for the stability and comfort we will need in the midst of life's temptations. Empower us to walk in the path of righteousness and give us the courage to do the things that are right in your sight. Gracious Father, make this year a blessed one. Not by shielding us from all sorrow and pain, but by strengthening us to bear with sorrow and pain when it comes our way. Not by making our paths easy, but by walking with us even when our paths are rough. Create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. God be under us to secure us, be over us to inspire us, be behind us to support us, be in front of us to guide us, be around us to protect us, be beside us to befriend us, and most of all, be in us to sustain us. Give strength to the weak, comfort to the weary, healing to the sick, and hope to the hopeless. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and forever. We humbly ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I want to speak to you from this subject. The promise of his presence. The promise of his presence. The beginning of a new year is usually marked by cheerful celebrations and solemn resolutions. That has not been the case in recent years and probably will not be this year because of a lingering pandemic. The emergence of the Omicron variant carries the threat of a new surge and is casting a gloomy shadow over this new year. And I urge each one of you to take all the necessary precautions to enhance the security and safety of those around you and all those you encounter. 
Nevertheless, in spite of the difficulties we're facing, those of us who are believers in Christ began this new year trusting in the blessed assurance of God, our Savior. Russell Carter wrote the words of a hymn that expresses his confidence and the confidence we have in our Master's promise. He wrote, Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail, when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all, I'm standing on the promises of God. Forty days after his resurrection, Christ gathered his disciples to the Mount of Olives. Here he gave them the Great Commission and ended his earthly ministry with these words that are found in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. All authority in heaven and in earth is given unto me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe and obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. King James records it as saying, Lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. The apostolic age begins with words of exaltation and reassurance. God exalted Christ into glory, and Christ left his believers with a precious promise. It is a promise of his abiding presence, and that is a promise that is empowering, comforting, and enduring. Luke, in his account of the ascension, adds these words, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. The disciples had been given a difficult task, they were sent out to change the world. The master had given them a hard task, but he also gave them the promise of a powerful helper. He instructed them to wait for the Holy Spirit. In order for them to do what they had been commissioned to do, they were commanded to wait for the Holy Spirit. The order in which the promise and command occurs shows how carefully Jesus considered the apostles' weaknesses. He reminded them to wait before even attempting to witness. Waiting on God is never a waste of time. Waiting on God is necessary for success in every endeavor of life until we have been empowered by God we had better be still Christ promised his disciples and he promised us the presence and power of the Holy Spirit our language is too weak to do justice to the majestic ministry of the Holy Spirit but we can say a few things about him. We can clearly say that he is a person, not a force, and not an it. The Holy Spirit is not a thing. He is the third person of the Trinity. He is our comforting friend who teaches 
convicts, leads, guides, and empowers. Scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit can be grieved, he can be resisted, and he can be quenched. But through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, we can do the things that God has called us to do. His power and his presence were promised by the Master, and it is a promise worth waiting for. More than ever before, we need the strength, the power, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. More than ever before, we need the strength, the power, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Without him, we are lost. But if he is with us, he will order our steps. Without him, we are weak. But in him, we can find the strength to endure. According to Paul, the presence of the Spirit of God in our lives grants us the ability to know God better, to know hope, and to have the power we need to prevail. The promise of power that we have as followers of Jesus Christ is nothing like the power of politics or the power of the military. It is a far greater power in that it is pointed in a totally different direction. Earthly power is the power to control, to enslave, but the power promised by Jesus is the power to rescue the perishing, find the lost, and liberate the enslaved. Moments before his ascension into heaven, Jesus told his disciples that the purpose of God's power given to us by his spirit was to equip us with the tools we will need to carry his message of freedom, hope, and love. And that message needs to be carried to our cities, to our states, to our nation, and to the ends of the earth. That is the real promise and purpose of the power of the Holy Spirit. Not control, but freedom. Not earthly wealth, but spiritual well-being. Not for personal benefit, but to give hope to the world. The Master's promise not only empowers us, it also comforts us. The last year has been very troublesome, and it appears that our troubles will continue. Despite our best efforts, we still face many problems. We're surrounded by sickness, pain, anxiety, sickness, and death. No matter how hard we try, we can't avoid suffering. It comes to us in many ways, illness, accidents, losses, disappointment, betrayals, are all facts of life. Some problems we cause ourselves, but other problems are beyond our control. But regardless of the cause, whenever problems arise, we need to be comforted. Which raises the question, what is comfort? What does it mean? To comfort does not mean we will be comfortable. It's not an easy chair in front of a television with a can of soda a bag of chips, a popcorn. No, to comfort is not merely to console us, but rather to strengthen us, to give strength to those who are struggling. The theologian R.C. Sproul explains it this way. The image of the comforter is not the one who comes to dry our tears after the battle. But our comforter comes to give us strength and courage for the battle. He comes along 
inside of us. The Holy Spirit comes alongside of us to strengthen us in times of tribulation. In times of trouble, we can find comfort in knowing that God is still in control. He has promised to heal our hurt, ease our pain, dry our eyes, mend our brokenness. The comfort of the Holy Spirit rests in the fact that Christ promised that you would have an abiding friend. The Holy Spirit, a real friend, a real friend who will not abandon you during difficulties. The Master's promise not only empowers and comforts, but the Master's promise also endures. This is underscored by his parting words. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. He did not promise us days of leisure and days of ease, but he promised never to leave us alone. We will experience moments of loneliness, but we will never be alone. The final words of the Master's promise literally means all the days or at all times. The word used expresses continuing continuity. Continuing continuity. The days that are coming might seem long, dark, and dreary, but our Lord promised that he would be with them and he also promised that he would be with us. Only the presence of Christ can give us the strength we need in our struggles. And the knowledge of his abiding presence will give us inner peace. Knowing that he is with us reassures us, encourages us, and strengthens us. Christ is Emmanuel. He is God with us. Christ is with us always. And he is with us in all types of days. There will be days of joy and gladness. For he is Jehovah Shammah, the ever-present God. And then there will be days of hurt and pain, but he is also Jehovah Rapha, the mighty and merciful healer. There will be days of need, want, and deprivation, but thank God he is Jehovah Nisi, our provider. And when storms rage all around you, hide in him. He is Jehovah Shalom, our place of peace in the midst of of the storm. For I've seen the lightning flashing and I've heard the thunder roll. i felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus telling me still to fight on. He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. Scripture provides proof of his abiding presence. He was with Moses in the desert and he was with Elijah on the mountain. He was with Daniel in the den of lions and he was with Peter in prison. He was with Paul during a storm and he was with Silas in a Philippian jail. He was with David when he walked through the valley and shadow of death and he was with John in exile on the Isle of Patmos. The world's Fierce winds are blowing. Temptations are sharp and keen, but I have a peace in knowing that my Savior stands between. He stands to shield me from danger when all earthly friends are gone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. History assures us that he has been with us. 
He's been our bread in times of hunger and our water in dry places. He's been our rock in a weary land and he's been our way when we thought there was no way. He's been our bridge over troubled waters and our light in life's darkest moments. He is our helper. He is our hope. And he is our savior. For he died for me on the mountain, for me, they pierced his side. For me, he opened the fountain, the crimson cleansing tide. And for me, he's waiting in glory. Seated upon his throne, he promised. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. No, never alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. We have the assurance of his abiding presence, for he is the mighty, matchless Lamb of God. Herod could not find him, death could not destroy him, and the grave could not hold him. But early on the third day morning, God raised him up, and he will be with us in the future like he has been in the past. His promises are sure. His words never fail. His presence endures. We are not alone. And we will never be alone. He is with us now. And he will be with us until the end. May grace, mercy, and peace and the abiding presence of the majestic Christ empower comfort and strengthen each of you now and in the days that are ahead. Amen and amen. Have a blessed week and a good year. Thank you.